Uh, well, thank you all for uh, coming uh, to the seminar, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, it's hard to be sure on attendance, but I'd say we're somewhere in the 100,000 range. Can you hear me back there? Um, no, thank you very much. Uh, it's going to be a really fun presentation. Um, power carving in terms of woodworking is something, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a gray area. You know, turning is like obviously a fine discipline. And what we are trying to do at Arbor Tech is really revolutionize woodworking. I mean, people have been woodworking pretty much the same way for a couple hundred years. Um, I'm really trying to kind of carve out a new category of woodworking, you know, like whether it's called power carving um, or we give it a different name, I'm not sure. But the whole idea is creativity, injecting creativity into in your work. So when you're watching me do this kind of stuff, you'll notice I'm really not measuring anything. Um, I'm kind of just going for it, which is uh, pretty satisfying uh, as well. Before I get started, um, I'm going to tell you all a quick story um, that draws a really close comparison with Arbor Tech. It's the fisherman's story, so some of you might have heard it before. Um, but the way it goes is there's a small, an old fisherman down in the Keys, Fort Keys, and he uh, came in from about midday from fishing and um, hit some really nice, lovely, large fish. And there's a businessman on the dock, and the businessman said, um, you know, that's, that's a nice fish there. You know, if you're a fisherman, I can help you be more successful. And uh, you know, the fisherman said, well, what will I do then? He said, well, this, and the businessman said, you've got to get another boat. And you stay out twice as long, you get twice as many fish. Makes sense, you know, you're going to... And the fisherman said, well, you know, what will I do then? Well, you're going to make more money, of course. You know, you got twice as many fish, twice as much money. The fisherman said, yeah, all right. So he did it. Got a second boat, caught more fish. Um, yada yada. The businessman came back and said, You're doing great. You twice as many fish, you're making that money. Um, now you need to open up a canning business and I'll run the books and uh, you'll make even more money by selling your fish to other people. Um, and the fisherman said, You know, what will I do then? He said, Well, you're going to make enough money that you can actually retire. The fisherman said, Well, that sounds great. Um, so we opened a canning business, made more money. The businessman made a lot more money. Um, and then finally the businessman came back a third time after the canning business had been running for, for a while. At this point the fisherman was a rich man. Um, and the businessman looked at the fisherman and said, um, you've made all this money, uh, you have more than enough you know, for the rest of your life, so I will ask you, my fishing friend, what will you do next? And he said, um, I'll probably go fishing. <laughs> and the moral of that story is, as long as you enjoy what you're doing, you're, you're already successful. It doesn't matter. That's really an important characteristic of Arbor Tech. Um, as long as you're having fun, you know, creating whatever it is, that's really what's important. And the, it sounds kind of fluffy, but it's the truth. I mean, I was not a woodworker before I started working with Arbor Tech, and um, I've really kind of amazed myself at some of the stuff I've done. Um, the way I will attack this presentation, I probably will not go the full 45 minutes, um, but uh, I'll give you a quick overview of all the tools. While I'm doing that, I want you guys to be thinking about, you know, I can maybe use this on that, or I could, um, you know, think about um, uh, something you do right now that you know, this tool might work for. Because trying to describe the application of the architect tools is like trying to describe the application of hot sauce. You can put it on literally almost anything. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, at the end, you know, if you have questions, come up and we'll talk. And we'll go from there. So I'll dive right into how the tools work and kind of the different options available. So the first one we start off with is our turbo plane. Um, and again, uh, I guess a little bit about Arbor Tech. It's only about 40 of us in the whole company, kind of a mixture of uh, hippies, woodworkers, and engineers. Um, and we invent, we've invented literally every single one of these tools. So there's nothing else out there quite like it. Um, we're very proud. So the turbo plane, you guys see that on the TV? Yeah. Is I'm just selling the disc right there. It'll fit an 84 inch angle grinder. There's no cutting on that outer edge. It's very important to remember that. I'm only working the face here with these three carbide teeth that are set at 90 degrees. And what that means is, like chainsaws, for example, have a slight angle for those teeth to always feed themselves in. That's really why they're so damn dangerous because if they run on you, they're going to keep running. Um, so here's the turbo plane. Any kind of large surface plane, the original purpose was chair seats, but again, think of other things you can use on it. Yeah. All on the stage. I'll probably the messiest uh, presentation up here. 
Um, everything I've just showed you is an attachment for, like I said, any four or four and a half inch angle. Right? I've got two more tools I'd like to, to show you and then I'll dive into projects. Um, but these ones, it's important to note that they're, they're pre-assembled. So you've got to buy them you know, with the motor, take them home, plug and play. Uh, don't manipulate them at all. Um, and the only reason for that is the way these systems are a little more complicated than just threading onto an angle grinder. Um, but the mini grinder is, well, it's awesome. It's, it's the closest thing to chainsaw carving that I do. Um, it's, uh, it's got a belt drive, so even like a hard piece of wood like ash, it's a hot knife for butter. It cuts on the edge. And once you get confidence that it's not going to kick on you, this belt, yeah, it's a power thing, it's a little extra hump, but it's also a safety thing. If you somehow jam the blade, the belt's going to slip and nothing's going to happen to you. So I encourage people to, um, you know, kind of change their grip and work it in kind of a scraping motion. You can dish out some really neat, uh, like, burrow holes are, are one of my favorite things to do. Um, is the safety aspect. I mean, it's no fun to work with tools you got to hang on, you know, for dear life for. This is very kind of stress-free, um, stuff here, creative. Um, so now move on to the power system. Uh, this is the, the last tool I'll show you. It's, again, complete unit, very safe. Trace it out. 
here. Um, but basically, this is just a this was just you know a blank, like a, just a red oak blank. I got a scrap piece of wood that I routed four holes in that I will use as a um, like a protractor. So clamp that bit in. So now what I've done here, um, I just put a little nail right there, so I'm not going to go anywhere. Here's one more, um, and I've used that depth gauge to basically set it to be just over half of the blank plus the the template. So when I go back and do the back side of it, anytime I overlap, it's going to basically create those cool see-through spots. So. See that? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so corner to corner, nothing 
nothing complicated here. I'm going to do that on every single side of the scrap block. And um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shape everything in between all the, those lines. So I've got one started here. I um, did two sides yesterday and I'm going to do the other two sides right now. Can you guys still see that? I'm using a turbo plane here. You'll find that you get a smoother cut if you're going with the grain than against the grain. Um, but see, I've basically got uh, two lines there. I'm just going to sculpt everything out. Uh, in the line. That's about all right, but I'm this way a lot smoother. Um, 
That's a very quick presentation on power carbon and a few different projects. Um, uh, you know, stuff you use our tools. Uh, I'd like to open up the floor for any questions you guys have. Yeah. And then one for the chainsaw, the mini chainsaw. Now, does that have power set back? Parts? Uh, you had said, like, yeah, is there like a belt on it? So there's a belt drive. Um, you know, I've been using this one for about four years now. I haven't had to replace the belt at all. Um, really, the only time, I, you know, we, we sell the replacement belts, I think they're like 10 bucks. Um, if you like were to jam it up into like a, a weird area in the wood, the belt would slip as a safety thing, and that can cause it to break. Um, you can just put a new one on yourself. So very, very easy to do. Uh, yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, yeah. You said that that's what we sold you. Correct. Um, so these two, the power chisel and the mini grinder, you have to buy and pre-assemble with our motor. Um, we get a year warranty on the motor. Nobody ever firms them out. If you do, give us a call. And, um, take care of it, so. And the only reason we did that is we, we tried to make these attachments, but between the belt drive system, this is like a reciprocating cam, with all the different models of grinders, it was just kind of a nightmare. And, you know, people thought, I can't fit this on, so we supply it pre-assembled, we don't want you taking it apart, um, and that's the thought behind that, so. You said you have a little range of uh, Yes, a uh, variety of profiles. So um, I've got some catalogs up here. Catalogs you can grab at, uh, after and set up a chart with all the different uh, profiles. Yeah. What's the cost of the power to that? Uh, 200 today, it only runs about 240. So everything's on sale. Um, I am located up in the, the, you know, the John Deere steel. Yeah. You can't really miss me, uh, to be honest, because as you can see, I have a nice trail of dust. Um, but yeah. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, any other any other questions? Thank you all very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Um,